Hi traders, Nick Shaheen here for Benzinga and uh, MarketFi. Create income with option spreads. Um, you can reach me at sellspreads at gmail.com right here or you can follow me and you can follow me on Twitter. Handle is uh, RacerNick. No K. Um, would like to recap the week ending 6-6 six, six, and look into next week. This was um, the week ending 6-6 six, six was a pretty important week full of events, major events, global events. Um, and it seems like the last couple of days uh, the markets love them. Uh, we had the ECB event where uh, Draghi announced um, whatever they called it, bazookas. Um, and also the um, jobs this morning was uh, just in line with expectations. This way, uh, it just uh, it was more of a relief of a um, more of a confirmation that okay things are not that bad. And if we had a dip of a few months, a few weeks back, it was because of weather. So uh, overall, a bullish tone. Uh, you can sense the the sentiment is not bullish. Plus, you add Apple in the mix. Yes, you have to add Apple because um, it is the largest and the uh, you know high profile. It plays in the in the psyche of people. Now suddenly everybody loves Apple. You know, I set out today uh, saying, uh, how come they all hated it when it was 400, and they hated it again when it was falling to 500. They, you know, at 400 they started calling 280, 250, 220. At uh, 500 they called, um, you know, mid fours, uh, low fours. You know, and when it was at 700 before that, they had people calling for 1111, uh, you know, over a thousand. So they love it when it comes to all time highs. They hate it when it becomes a good deal. Um, so I'm not touching it right now, right here. Not that it doesn't, it can't go up. It's just uh, I don't have any levels I can shoot for. So I'd rather sit back and wait and see what's going on. Uh, splitting soon, seven for one, if you don't know that. Um, all right, so what do I do after a week like this? After a week with so many events, um, and I, I take stock. What, what does that mean? No, I don't buy stock. I take stock in uh, the important drivers in how I trade. The number one driver is the macro. If I don't know what, where the world is going or what the world looks like investment-wise or actually geopolitical, any kind, um, how can I trade? So my thesis this week um, was confirmed. All along, uh, members know this, uh, my thesis has been, okay, the doom scenario with the current variables is highly unlikely, uh, meaning everybody's calling for correction just because we haven't had one. Uh, that's silly. Um, you know, uh, but if you call in a, a correction because you think there's going to be a black swan, swan event, then that's fine. But the black swan event is not part of the current variables, so it can happen at any point in time. Therefore, I don't account for it. I hedge some of the bets, but I don't bank on it happening every day. So the thesis has been, okay, we are high, extended, but we can get higher. We're going to creep up, and uh, we're going to probably correct a little bit here and there. But the doom scenario, 10 15% drops in, in wishes, I just don't see it. We need a catalyst, negative catalyst for that. So I, the way I, I trade it is I, I leave room for the upside a little bit, and I, I try to sell uh, credit call spreads above that and then I, I, I hedge my short bet credit call spreads or shorting markets or tickers and then I hedge it by taking some bullish positions via credit put spreads but leaving room for some sort of a mini correction or a drop so a, a balanced approach timing those can be tricky sometimes I enter it at the same time other times I leg into the upper side or the lower side depends on the price action this week the move up has not been a creep. I mean, we had a 2% up day on the small caps yesterday and a 1% up day almost. I, I didn't look at the close. At the, uh, um, followed by 1% up today. So strong moves. That's not creep up. But, you know, coming back from, they've been badgered, uh, the small caps. So we'll visit that a little later. So I take stocks. That I take stock in my thesis. Now I'm happy. My thesis has been confirmed. Now I'm comfortable continuing my trading pattern. So thesis confirmed, trading pattern can continue. I can't trade without knowing what the global picture looks like. And secondarily, I look at the micro, which is each individual ticker. 
and I trade it based on levels I have. So in Apple, I didn't trade it the last couple of weeks because I don't have the levels. So the levels are not clear because headlines will, um, you know, trump levels at any point in time. So what do I do? I just sit back and watch. I've made some money on Apple. I don't have to trade it every week. Um, and as a matter of fact, today's, uh, I mean, this week's movements would have blown me out because the levels I thought I had um, were not correct as far as accuracy. But today they may have been, but uh, previously I was surprised at the strength in Apple uh, beyond 630 and up. So, But regardless, um, the thesis confirmed, trade as you please based on the thesis. It's okay. And uh, the, so once I confirm the thesis, I need a, I usually take a gauge. Okay, what am I trading against? For the last few months, we've been trading inversely with the TLT and the yen. You know, TLT, yen go up, markets and uh, the TNX go down. It was like clockwork. This broke down uh, last week, confirmed earlier this week, it's broken down. And now the only correlation I'm seeing is a rise in a yield in the 10 year is causing the markets to break down. So, now what used to be friend of the market the tnx now is the enemy so i'm watching the tnx it's not as clear as it was the other way around but it's still hand in hand so now i'm watching the tnx i'm also surprised as the strength in the euro you know if, if the euro come out and say we're gonna print print make loose money i would expect that to go down but uh, recently it held up pretty well yesterday it spiked i was like what's going on so uh, surprising there so i i have on my radar, a few things that could be uh, uh, omens. So the, these, uh, the ECB event is out of the way. The jobs is out of the way. The Apple split is almost out of the way. Um, so the bears look like they have been hurt this week, obviously. But it's not the bear of 2013. They're not scared, and which is kind of scaring the bulls a little bit. So yes, it was bullish this week, but I still need to be convinced that it's the 2013 bull. The 2014 bull hasn't had too many, um, you know, hoot and holler days. So they might be tempted, a few might be tempted to book some profits on rips like today and or this week, I should say. It's very tempting to take some profits. Okay, so having said that, I want to take a look at this coming week. What do I do? I first of all I have a lotto ticket. Usually I give you a lotto ticket, and it's Baidu. I know I'm not the only one that uh, noticed something in it. Um, based on the options, I can tell that somebody is betting big on some big move in Baidu, which sounds ridiculous to me after big moves. But who am I to argue with that? I took cheap calls in Baidu for June. Uh, that's my lotto ticket for this week. I have a couple other ones, but this one stands out. Uh, yesterday I wanted to take some Panera Lottos. Uh, unfortunately, I'm <laughs> somebody else must have seen what I've seen, and it's spiked up today. It still might not be too late. Uh, we can visit that actually since we're talking about it. So Panera, Panera. I think I have it here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, yesterday I made a note, um, and I didn't publish it because I didn't think it was urgent, saying that okay, you know, we might be seeing a, a breakup in Panera because it was at an important level, and it's been hammered down, and it's more upside light, chances of upside than downside. So I thought it would be good, but I missed it, so I can't claim I took it, but it, it's still on my uh, radar. Uh, conversely, WLP. I think uh, yesterday I made a note that puts might work, and again, I didn't act on it, but it's on my short. Uh, it was kind of like getting tight, um, and from a range perspective, because, you know, the, the dirty, just, you know, not scientific. I, I don't like, it's squeezing and it's cusping, just instinct tells me. Um, also, on the negative side, I believe, uh, RL, at Ralph Lauren, and um, in that guy, I, I, I saw two, it, it's squeezing. Look how tight this is getting. And this is an important level here. It held, except for that massive candle, <laughs> at this level area. And now it's higher lows, but still butting up. Usually, will the bears get tired of defending that line? Or will they, again, badger the... The, the long so I don't have any positions in it but it might have a big move coming I haven't take I haven't decided if I want to guess up or down it is a guess that's why I call them lotto tickets 
Um, it, so th that was um, same thought. I think I, if I'm speaking from memory, Zillow. I don't trade it often, but it's looking the same way. It's getting tighter and tighter at super elevated levels, and I'm not sure that it is worth being up here. So on this guy, I would definitely bet lower. That would be betting, just guessing based on a move that's coming. I can see a move coming. I just want to guess which direction. And on this one, I would guess lower. Um, so uh, we talked about these two. Las Vegas, um, I thought there was a head and shoulders yesterday forming, or not forming. Uh, there was a head and shoulders pattern and I thought that it, you know, falling peaks of sorts, um, lower highs might be worth a short. And today was red on a big day. So two red candles on two green market candles is not good news for Las Vegas. So, um, you know, I, I may be one day or two days late, but there might be some room to the downside there if the head and shoulder comes to fruition. Now, CMG is another one I noticed and I thought to myself yesterday, right when it was butting up against this level i thought plus or minus 50 points <laughs> so meaning that i see a big move coming in it i don't know if it's up or down so if you're a gambler and you think it's worth being up here then you take the upside um if uh, especially if you believe the markets are going to rip if not you know maybe take some puts in it I, I have not taken the position yet i'm still watching it so those are the big guys and then caterpillar uh, last week I guessed right, but I was only right for about a day. Luckily, I booked some profits in that, but you know it wasn't major. Uh, but look at that! I mean, this is screaming to me. Um, what are you doing up here? So, this these are thin, two thin previous visits to this area. Is this time going to be different? I don't know. I, I'm inclined to say no. Now. Which brings me to bring up the point of what's going to go on Monday. We don't have any uh, major events locally here in the U.S., but overseas we do have, uh, I believe, China on Saturday and Japan on Sunday. They should have, I think, import-export on China and on um, Japan with some lending numbers and uh, maybe GDP, I believe, and some uh, consumer confidence there. Those are important in Japan because they've had recent major changes. So I, I'd be interested in seeing what's going on there. So if China comes in weak, maybe um, uh, it's not construction numbers, but maybe that could translate into some weakness in CAT. I mean, look at these candles. I don't remember seeing candles like that before. Um, and every spike in, not every, often enough spikes in Caterpillar uh, result in downs. If I'm looking at, this is a one-year chart. Here's a spike, here's a spike, here's a spike, here's a spike. You know, This spike obviously was down just for a short period of time and then ripped up. This is a spike that held and doubled up and then consolidated. This is a spike that held and spike to no end i don't i don't get it um i i, I don't get it so but anyway it, you know jim kramer loves it you might as well love it too um so those are the na particular names as far as the markets in general um you know monday what's going to happen i'm not sure we should come up with some i thought that the even though it was a positive day um the fact that we kind of like drifted down uh, drifted sideways on the S&P, and it, I don't. It wasn't a clear win. Like it, yesterday was no doubt. Oh, clobber the bear's day. Today wasn't as bad. So maybe on Monday we 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 can come in with some upward bias, um, um, and we'll see how the day trades. The 2014 bull is he gonna be or she gonna be tempted to take some profits? I'm not sure. I'm tempted to say yes. So what do I do? I'm not shorting anything flat out. I am long a few things and what I do is I short uh, cautiously. How does that work out? I short giving myself some buffer to be wrong. So if I want to short the small caps, I don't short them right here. I short them out and up. Um, give myself you know, a buffer zone to where if I'm wrong, I can withstand the heat for a couple of days. <laughs> and, um, it's, and but, but it's all hedged. I'm not taking any one directional bets anymore, especially in these headline markets, because if something happens and it moves against me, I want to be able to close out the whole trade or close out a couple of trades and come out even or not as badly hurt. So um, the the that's the idea behind how I, I uh, trade a, an upward moving market that every, where everybody's expecting a sell off. So give myself room on the upside and hedge the bets. So the markets uh, this week were 
obviously strong if but the overall picture let's look at the small cap since we mentioned it everybody said head and shoulders headed down the low 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 um, it, it hit some technical targets um, it broke out here and got to you know previously topish areas before they broke out and peaked every time I'm looking at a chart any outliers like any peaks any triangles that stick out over several peaks I call them the overshoots so if this was an overshoot it may try to repeat it here I'm not sure it it, it can in this environment the, this bear might be a little too strong this is a solid area of trade uh, so I may be tempted to play this area for the next couple of weeks if not uh, cautiously you know I can hedge my bets so that is the um, small caps now one big note I published a paper today about the Nasdaq okay so this is uh, the Nasdaq very bullish and my note was okay the Nasdaq is heavily influenced by Apple very heavily influenced by Apple so how does that how do I translate how do I resolve the fact that this run up right here let's see I, I think I looked at 416 the day of 416 this is where the cursor is okay this area right here on out so from here on up here this move half of it can be attributed to the same period of time Apple move so this is 416 from here on out if Apple is 12 percent 10 percent 12 percent whatever it is of the NDX this move right here accounts for half of the percentage gain of the same period of time for the NASDAQ so the question is does Apple have more in it that much more in it if not will somebody else step up to the plate um, and uh, pick up the slack to get the NASDAQ to all-time highs okay so I'm not shorted the NASDAQ yet but I'm very tempted and I can do it via credit call spread or leaps or whatever or Priceline I did short Priceline I think I told you last week sh I'm shorting leaps and Priceline and now they're 10 more than tell the $12 cheaper than last week when I did them even spreads um, 1560 1570 I mean, yeah ridiculously high but for leaps you know it, it, they trade wide but that works out to my favor uh, sometimes you you put the order out and you leave it and it closes uh, way better to your favor sometimes so th those are the two uh, the spy I, I thought that it was going to be capped yesterday or this week but look it broke out okay I had a uh, um, I think uh, it's best represented cleaner charts I did the blue I said okay so we're hitting tops here we've seen this movie before it did it in the yellow see the yellow dash lines and it broke down well here it caught called me a liar because it uh, broke out so who knows where to next I'm not shorting it at all but I'm shorting a, a few names today Priceline was not participating I believe uh, and that's why I was happy to have picked Priceline to short the Nasdaq and the Momos I was tempted to short um, Tesla this week at 2250 and, five, uh, and uh, luckily I uh, said no I don't think I'm gonna do it I don't have any problems and I don't want to bring the bear now Priceline is looking uh, MACD maybe topish I love the company I think they they're the ultimate Momo I I'm sad they trade like a Momo because they deserve to be trading like a Google so on, on a good day um, they make money they're not very frothy so that's the deal with the overall picture and that's the deal with my lotto that was the Baidu and that's how I'm looking at trading the market going forward um, macro still intact so go about the business so what I tell everybody that I talk to uh, it's not rocket science and don't get exuberant don't chase how do I know I'm chasing if you feel compelled to move the order in order to get the order executed because it's the price is moving one way or another you're chasing um, I, ha I had this conversation with a member today uh, he, he said well I'm trying to get this um, uh, credit put spread executed and then I said well it sounds like a good idea to me and then he came back uh, a couple hours later saying or an hour later he said I can't get the uh, execution should I move it up um, to closer to trouble and I'm thinking no then you'd be actually you know chasing kind of because this is where you want to be don't compromise and get somewhere else 
uh, if you want to get somewhere else, uh, give yourself more time to compensate. So if it's not executing here, maybe time is the problem and not the level. I'd rather take time than level. So buffer zones really pay off. If you play too close to the money, you're going to get hurt. It may work and work and work and work, and one week it doesn't. 1900 held, 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 held. and then uh, I, But I keep saying, okay, if 1900 I think is going to hold, I don't short it at 1900 to take the dollar credit or the 80 cents credit as far as credit spreads. I short it higher. I give myself 20 bucks and some time to react. And I say, okay, if it gets here, I'm out or I roll or I close it or I buy insurance or something. So give yourself levels, give yourself time and act. If you're holding on just because you think the market's going to go down, that's hopium, uh, not good trading. Again, this is Nick Shaheen. Create income with option spreads on MarketFi. Visit us. Um, sign up. It's free. You'll get my newsletter. Uh, only one of them. You won't get the levels that I send out every morning. Um, and also, um, the um, Benzinga folks have some really good coverage of the market. So if you're not a member there or if you don't follow them um, on all the social media, you're missing out. They do send out notices um, even before all the news breaks it out. Signing off. 20 minutes on the money.